Hey guys, welcome. Good evening. Come on. A lot of discussion is going on. I can see. Right. Okay. So you, uh, it seems all of you are very much enthusiastic about your boards. That's great to look actually. Okay. Uh, so welcome to the rapid exam prep session. And today we'll be discussing the chapter heredity and evolution. Now, guys, this is a chapter that you should be careful about. Now, why? Because the chapter is more uh, difficult, I should say, than it looks. So certain times we think we understand the concept, but we don't. And believe me, that happens. So make sure that you understand the bits and pieces that you need to know at this level. OK, so let us try to understand what do we need to know in this chapter. So the chapter is named Heredity and Evolution. So the first point comes to heredity. So what's heredity? The progeny has the same characters, characteristics as the parent, right? So that will be studied under the branch called heredity. So transmission of characteristics from the parent to the progeny, right? Next, we come to evolution. In evolution, we basically try to understand what is and how the variety that we have of life has arisen. We, we try to understand the various reasons. We try to understand various mechanisms and such on, right? Okay, so let's first try to understand heredity. So uh, who was the one scientist that formed the basis of this chapter? That was Mendel, right? So basically, NCRT is all about Mendel. What was, who was Mendel and what did he do? Now, you have to understand two experiments of Mendel. First is a monohybrid and the dihybrid cross. You should remember that monohybrid cross, you only follow one character. Very importantly, people get confused here. So monohybrid cross is simply a cross where you're following one character. There, there might be other kind of heredity uh, heredities that would be happening at that point of time. For example, when you talk about TT, big T, big T, cross, small t, small t, you are following height. But that doesn't mean that big G, big G go, uh, cross small G, small G won't be happening, right? So monohybrid cross simply means that you're following one character. A dihybrid cross means you're following two characters. So maybe you are doing um, big T, big T, big Y, big Y cross small T, small T, small Y, small Y, right? So you can do all types of crosses. What you need to know is the monohybrid and dihybrid cross. Nikhil, thank you for asking that question. Uh, character is a feature. Trait are the variations. So trait are the alternative forms of the character. So ca difference between character and a trait, difference between phenotype and a genotype, difference between gene and allele, these basic questions should be very clear in your mind. OK, now, so the monohybrid cross in which only you follow one character leads to two laws of Mendel, that is law of dominance and law of segregation. Law of dominance simply says that there are two alternative forms of alleles and one of them codes for the dominant trait, right? So big T, big T, that is a homozygous tall plant and big T is dominant over small t. That means in, if the, the genotype is big T, small t, T will be the one that will be expressed, right? Then comes law of segregation that says, or also known as law of purity of gametes, that gamete will have only one copy, right? So gamete will have either big T or the small t. It can't have both. We'll come to genetic drift, Palak. Wait, wait, we are still uh, discussing heredity right now. We'll come to genetic drift. Now, dihybrid cross, basically, where you are following two characters. OK. So two characters led to uh, discovery of the law of independent assortment. That means when I'm examining the height and the color of the uh, seed, I should understand that height is not dependent upon the color of the seed, and seed is not dependent upon the color of height. Their heredities are not entangled. They are heredit, uh, <clears throat> inherited independent of each other, right? Then comes to the extensions of the heredity. Now, the three laws are the, Mend are the Mendel law Mendel's laws, right? Sex determination and ABO blood groups are extensions of the heredity that you have to study. 
now you will be you might be uh, uh, wondering where, where is this in the ncrt ncrt doesn't explicitly mentions abo blood group system but it is asked in form of a question so you should be able to understand the three alleles ia ib and small i which is also an example of multiple allelism that means three alleles for the same character right and you should be able to understand the sex determination uh, frequent questions that are asked is you might be given the genotype of the uh, the genotypes of the parents and you will be asked to predict whether the uh, uh, what is the ratio of the boys to girls right you might be also asked uh, you might be given the genotype let's say xx you should be able to know that xx is a girl and xy is a boy right so these intricacies should be well learned to you now let's come to the concept which is a bit more difficult than heredity because heredity is simple concepts that was that were dis discovered by mendel right now evolution is where it becomes very tricky so first we try to understand the theory of evolution that means how was the life created you uh, in ncrt they are only given a brief history or be brief understanding of the creation of life that is chemical evolution you have to know about the experiment that was performed by miller and yuri okay this might be asked in your exams first thing uh, thank you nikhil again for reminding that the ratio the genotypic ratios and the phenotypic ratios for the monohybrid cross should be available to you so 3 is to 1 and 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 you should be able to deduce these ratios you should be able to understand what the ratios mean these are for monohybrid cross for dihybrid cross you only need the uh, the uh, sorry the mono, uh, the f1 and the f for f2 uh, you don't need the uh, genotypic ratio only the phenotypic ratio is fine right for monohybrid you have 3 to 1 and 9331 is for the dihybrid cross okay so make sure that you remember these ratios uh mehal uh, wait a second trihybrid no nickel you don't have to understand about trihybrid what was about miller sir uh miller and yuri they proved the theory of chemical evolution that life arose because of the reducing conditions that was there present on the uh, earth that time about 3 3.8 or 4 billion years ago right so you need to understand that experiment and you can be asked to label it but that comes only rarely now theory of evolution you should be understand uh, you should be able to understand the variation that in variations where do, where do variations come from changes in the dna right and sexual reproduction you should uh, be able to link this chapter to the chapter reproduction so variations and sexual reproduction is kind of linked then natural selection this question is very frequently asked why what is natural selection simply nature picks the fittest right nature picks the fittest so if there there is an allele in the population that is giving an advantageous edge that allele will be picked up by the nature speciation and its causes many people are asking about speciation so what what's a species a species is a group of individual which can interbreed and produce which can interbreed and produce fertile offsprings very important this is the definition that you have to use for species which can interbreed and can produce fertile offsprings. Now, speciation has certain forces or things that can cause, uh, you know, uh, speciation. That can be natural selection. That can be genetic drift. Right? That can be variations also linked with natural selection. That can be reproductive isolation or geographical isolation also gene flow and drift okay guys don't get confused between these two 
genetic drift is a sudden change now people get confused between two things genetic drift versus natural selection now remember natural selection is because a particular allele is offering an advantage genetic drift happens by accident it wasn't planned it is not dependent upon the advantage that the particular allele is providing you remember the classic case of blue beetles and red beetles right the red beetles were tramped on by the elephant elephant did not differentiate between red and blue it just happened to tramp upon the red beetles and that is why the frequency of the blue beetles increase in the population that was genetic drift it's a sudden change that happens by accident natural selection on the other case is a gradual phenomena that happens because a particular gene or a, a particular allele is offering an advantage now gene flow is uh, when a population migrates to some other population difference between geographical and reproductive isolation reproductive isolation can be of various types which basically makes sure that two populations can't interbreed it may be because of geographical isolations for example a stream of river may separate two populations and make them reproductively isolated as well but reproductive isolation can happen because of other features as well for example a horse and a donkey they can mate but they won't be producing fertile offspring hence they are two different species okay so reproductive isolation can be reject because of rejection of gametes right a particular flower will be only able to fertilize the same uh, the same species of flower right uh, a mango flower can't fertilize a rose flower right so there there is a gametic um, non compatibility that is that all comes under uh, reproductive isolation then you need to understand the evidences of evolution so what are the evidences of evolution first comes the fossil founder effect is one thing uh, that comes under genetic drift you don't need to know that uh, to that level don't worry about it okay now uh, the uh, evidence of evolution comes uh, the first evidence is fossils right so you should be knowing how we date fossils so first is the relative dating and the second is the c radioactive carbon okay so radioactive carbon is the other so, uh, way to date the fossils right then homologous and analogous organs you should remember homologous organs are those which have the same ancestry but may the have diverged to suit the conditions analogous organs on the other hand they don't have the same ancestry but they have converged to give the same fitness in uh, or uh, suitability in a particular environment okay carbon dating method okay i will try examples of uh, analogous organs and homologous organs okay think about a bat and a butterfly both have wings the purpose of both is to fly but the ancestors of bats and uh, butterflies are not one right so the wings of a butterfly and wings of a bat are analogous organs they don't have same ancestry but they have same design to suit the suit their need homologous organs if you consider uh, examine the four limbs of the tetrapods a cat a four limbs are fe its feet a human's four limbs are its hands a whale's four limbs are its flippers but they all have diverged over time so that they can adapt to their specific environments so those are homologous organs because they all have the same ancestor okay why is dna copying important issue because dna during the process of dna copying there are errors introduced in that okay when not corrected these may lead to variations okay evolution and spe speciation is creation of new species whereas when you talk about evolution that is at a pop at the level of population so evolution is uh, inherited uh, sorry heritable changes that occurs in the population okay okay then human evolution again you have to just understand the evidence not in detail guys for human evolution you don't need to know the details 
you can start, uh, talk about the uh, origin that was in africa and from there how they diverged to central asia and to north america and south america and so on right now let's try to practice a few questions before that what are the important questions that can be asked anything can be asked from mendel's experiment but mostly they ask you the monohybrid cross they don't ask you the dihybrid cross speciation its causes as i have listed here speciation you can be asked about any mechanism you can be asked to explain it make sure you do that evidence of evolution fossils homologous analogous organs and uh, the presence of vestigial organs even uh, so evolution by stages that also presents some uh, evidence towards that why was pea plant used several factors first it has a very short generation time it has very it had very easily observable traits that too um, th which can be easily observed and made difference into. Now, this, this is a question that appeared for last year theory. A Mendelian experiment consisted of a breeding pea plants bearing violet flowers with pea plants bearing white flowers. So who will tell me are violet flowers uh, dominant or recessive? Dominant or recessive? Okay, so violet flowers are dominant, right? Whereas white flowers are recessive. That is why I have used small v, small v for white, whereas big v, big v for violet. What will be the result of the evgeny? Uh, sorry, progeny, right? So we know the gametes will be capital V. Always try to list it like these. The, this is a P generation. This is the gametes. And then we have the F1. So that comes together to capital V, small v. And we know because the violet is the dominant trait, this will be violet in phenotype and big V, small v in genotype, right? Now, because this is a one marker question, you don't, you can draw the cross if you want to, but try avoiding writing a simple answer such as violet. If you're writing violet, then explain why do you think violet? You have to explain that violet is the dominant phenotype. Hence, the F1 progeny will be violet because it will carry the alleles big V and small v. And in heat, even in heterozygous condition, dominant alleles are expressed. So make sure if you're writing, give a proper explanation. It might, Kish, uh, Kishan, it might. Why is violet dominant? Uh, that is something that is way out of your, uh, you know, scope right now, Jyoti. Now, what are fossils and how is the age of fossils determined? So what are fossils? Fossils are impressions of the past life forms that are there, that are, that are found in several layers of rocks. How is the age of fossils determined? Uh, molecular phylogeny. Uh, I will answer that issue in just a moment. How is age of fossils determined? So first, you have the relative dating. So you should be understanding what is relative dating. So if we have different strata, if we have different layers of fossils, so the one that will be near top will be a younger species, where the one near the bottom will be an older species, right? So this way. None. Next is the radioactive carbon dating. Because of the radioactivity of carbon, so we use the ratio of the normal and the radioactive carbon, that C12 is to C14, to determine the age of fossils. Two methods are used. Okay. Artificial selection. Artificial selection that was performed by wild cabbage led to evolution of many uh, plants, for example, cabbage and cauliflower examples. So cabbage was selected because of the apical buds right cauliflower was selected because of the flower right so these are the things that you should be uh, in fact you should remember the other examples as well but these are the ones that are frequently asked okay now sample paper question these are the questions that have appeared in the sample paper let's try to understand this how can we how do we understand that violet is dominant vishay c 
if the F1 is heterozygous, it has capital V and small v, right? So the capital V or the violet trait is even uh, expressed in the heterozygous condition. So because of that, we know that violet is dominant. A recessive trait needs to be present in homozygous condition to be expressed. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't understand artificial uh, Nishad artificial selection is where an artificial force such as human uh, such as mankind has picked a certain trait and eventually it evolved for example wild cabbage was just a plant but then we started selecting those plants which had bigger flowers and gradually we took uh, we took the evolution forward to this that we now have cauliflower which really, with really big flowers. The ancestor did not. Okay. Okay. So, uh, name the phenomena that governs the following. Green beetles living in green bushes are not eaten by crows. So, green beetles are living in green bushes. So, the allele for the green color is giving it an advantage. And hence, it was selected by nature. So, that is natural selection. Now, number of blue beetles in green bushes increases only because the red beetles living there were trampled by a herd of elephants. Now, as I explained previously, this was an accident or uh, an unplanned event that happened by accident. And it changed the the frequency of alleles in the population. That means this was genetic drift. Third, okay, I see. No medium height plants are obtained in F1 generation upon crossing pure tall and dwarf plants. Uh, who will explain question number three? Yes. Come on, question number three. No medium height plants are... Guys, these questions are important because these are from the sample papers that have been provided by the CBSC. Make sure you're, you're, you're focusing here. Dominance. Yes, that's correct, Ashok. Because we have only dominant... Uh, the, uh, the character, the traits are... The pure tall is dominant over dwarf. But remember... The ABO blood group system has co-dominance as well, right? So you should be able to understand the difference between dominance and co-dominance. Not for medium height, uh, Agarwal, the better thing is a law of dominance. Not segregation, uh, Aisha. Now, fourth, tail, okay, you, I think you're answering for fourth. Tail of mice was surgically removed for several generations, still mice had tails in the following generations. Can someone answer this fourth question? See, uh, there was no reason for that. The elephants happened to put its foot upon that. There was no reason. That is why we call it genetic drift because it happened by accident. Simple as that. Yes. So our, uh, the surgical removal was a change in the acquired characteristics. It wasn't an inherited characteristics, right? That is what. Fifth, a migrant beetle reproduces with local population. As a result, the gene of migrant beetle enters the new population, right? So this is gene flow. Okay. Now, what are the important things that you should keep in your mind while you answer the questions in the exams? Here, you don't have diagrams, but make sure you learn via diagrams. What do I mean by learn via? Many people confuse between yellow seeds and green seeds. So green seeds are recessive. Yellow is dominant, right? Whereas green pots are dominant and yellow uh, is recessive. People generally forget that. Even I forget this sometimes. But make sure that you know this. Follow mark plus one scheme. Uh, 
this chapter is entirely dealt in points so if you don't answer in points then you won't end up uh, having marks uh shrivastav mridul synthetic theory of evolution believe me you don't need right now that is why i'm not answering that that's not that's not at your board level don't worry about questions right now this session is specifically designed just to ha- uh, give you a view of what is important from board point of view right okay so uh here you will have a lot of questions where you might be asked to draw or uh, to chart uh, the crossings right so if you are asked t t uh, cross small t small t so make sure you are doing the crossing even if like the question that was for one mark make sure you are doing the cross because this only makes sure that you know it well very well now in this chapter make sure whenever you have such things you are answering via the flow charts or diagrams and make sure you are you have revised because certain times uh, what we do is we we calculate wrong ratios and that ruins all the part okay genetic genotypic ratio of the dye hybrid cross okay i can't explain it here but genotypic ratio is a ratio of the genotypes right it's a long ratio you don't need it for the dye hybrid cross you only need the phenotypic ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 9 is dominant for both 1 is recessive for both 3 is dominant for one recessive for another and the other three is recessive for one dominant for other okay so you just need the phenotypic ratio not this uh, genotypic ratio molecular phylogeny uh, phylogeny is the study of uh, evolutionary characteristics right so it's a it's a study of evolutionary history of any organism when we study that using the molecules like uh, dna proteins that is molecular phylogeny okay law of segregation uh, basically is that the gamete is pure for an allele that means if there are two alleles big t small t gamete can have only one it can't have both okay age of fossil syndrome can be identified by relative dating or it can also be done by the radiocarbon dating okay guys so that's me signing off i hope you people were able to make use of this bye and see you in next class uh try to revise this chapter and because this is really uh sometimes uh, complicated okay bye bye uh okay wait we i will take this last question codominance is when the two alleles in case for example i a is codominant over i b that means both the alleles will be expressed that is you get that is how you get the a b o blood type you have both the alleles i a and i b expressed okay guys uh so bye that's me off we'll talk more about it uh, more uh, more about the next chapter in the next class